Thanks, Gregor. Uh, afternoon, Paul. Uh, yeah, in the media, we always hear about measuring stick type of games. Uh, how's your group approaching this series with the Toronto Maple Leafs? Uh, just like a new series. I think uh, nice to kind of have a day off yesterday. Uh, good practice today, kind of forget about what happened last game and just turn the page because, like I said, I, I could say measuring stick, but I think every team in our division kind of brings something different to the table. And when you play each team nine or 10 times you know, in one season, uh, you just got to worry about that individual series. And for us, that's, you know, we lost the first game to them, but they're a whole different team, a whole different team, and we're just excited for the challenge. Go well, next to Paul Friesen from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks, Gregory. Paul, following up on that a little bit, whether it's the way the Leafs play or, or the talent they have at certain positions, uh, what separates them from the rest of the pack in the North, do you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, like on any given night, you know, all seven teams in our division can beat anybody. So, you know, so, you know, one team gets hot for one or two weeks, obviously they're going to create separation, but uh, they just got, you know, a lot of finishers, um, like every team, but like, you know, they, they don't have as many chances to produce as many goals, but then uh, they play a good transition game, they have a good puck possession, and they got a lot of creativity on that team. Uh, all four lines have like different guys that play different ways, and um, sometimes it, it, uh, it can create havoc, and then sometimes you play it the right way, you can create chances for yourself, but um, for them, it's, it's like I said, it's those creative players are, um, they're fun to watch, and, and they're tough to play against, and, and you gotta be aware when they're out there. And their power play too, I think the power play is uh, lethal, you know, so it's kind of like an Edmonton power play, you don't want to put them out there, but, you know, when teams are really good, you know, if you look at the numbers a lot of times, it, you know, especially team help, helps them win a few of those games. Go next to Carter Brooks from Game On. Go ahead, Carter. Go ahead, Carter. Hey, Paul. As a player who's taken uh, a lot of face-offs in the NHL, maybe not so many as of late, but uh, how important do you think the face-off game is going to be against uh, such a strong possession team like the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always important. I think. Uh, like you said, if you start with possession, it just makes the game a lot easier. And, you know, whether it's obviously always going to be so important, but even neutral zone, you know, like a center ice drop, you win that possession and, and you get it in and you start the four check. Trust me, it's way better than doing the other way, being on your heels and, and you know, playing defense. And all of a sudden, you know, it takes a lot more effort to go from defense to offense, obviously, than it does from, you know, getting on the four check and just getting after, especially early in the shift. So um, a lot of times, if you watch, you know, games like this or just any games, and take those always on these zone draws out, like those new zone draws. You know, if you win it or if you lose it and then you're kind of hemmed in defensively, a lot of times, you know, you're just kind of biting the bullet and just you're basically spending the next 30 to 45 seconds either getting the puck out of the zone or kind of playing a neutral zone game. And just it's not frustrating, it's just kind of a waste of a shift sometimes. And you realize how important it is. Um, you know, and it's the same way, like if you do win the draw and you're changing, it's way better to, you know, have the D hold the puck. Let us get in on a you know on a change and come in with a set breakout than it is the other way where they have the puck and then you got to start the four check on their set breakout. Go next to uh, Michael Tracos. Go ahead, Michael. Hey Paul, um, just wondering how you feel that you guys match up against Toronto. Uh, I just see a lot of similarities, whether it's down the middle with your depth at the center position or on the wings uh, or even in that um, where it could be kind of a mirror image uh, type of series. Just wondering how you feel you guys measure up. Yeah, I think I think pretty good. Like I said, they, they're fun to play against. I think uh, you just got to be careful. I think uh, you know there's some guys on our team that, and some guys on our team probably play want to play that uh, run and gun style. And, you know, trade chance for chance, but I think that's that's a dangerous game to play. But at the same time, I think you know there's going to be chances given up both ways, and um, you know that that's just a matter of when you're playing, you know, with highly skilled guys and you're playing with smart two-way players that create turnovers. That's going to happen. But yeah, I think it's. I don't know. I think it's, it's always a fun game. I think since I've been, you know, when I was here a few years ago and when I've been here now, I feel like every time Winnipeg plays Toronto, at least the last three or four years, it's always been kind of fun hockey to watch and a pretty evenly uh, scaled battle. Just a couple more for Paul. We'll go next to Kelly Moore from CJOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Hey, Paul. I don't know whether it's uh, real or perceived, but it seems like if uh, somebody needs to pick me up or uh, perhaps their game isn't quite going the way that uh, it is, it needs to be, they put Paul Stastny on that player's line. Uh, do you see yourself as kind of a Mr. Fix-It? And if so, it, 
has that kind of been the, the hallmark of your career throughout the years or would that be something a little bit different for you? Uh, I don't know. I just, I just try to play my game. It doesn't matter who I'm with. Uh, I try to help my line mates, you know, make the game easier for them. Um, you know, I, I think here I've had different line combinations, but I'm really not complaining because, you know, whether I'm playing with the guys I'm playing with now or whether I'm playing with a cover and fly or whether I was playing, you know, you're always going to be playing with good players. So in that situation, you know, you have a coach that trusts you and puts you with different good com line combinations. You've got to just go out there and, and, and just play your game and not change your game. And I think that's kind of always been my game. Um, you know, maybe maybe early in my career, I should have complained more about it so I get the line mates I wanted. But <laughs> that's not the way I've been brought up. I've just gone out there and just kind of enjoy the opportunity. And, you know, sometimes I think when you are younger, you kind of, uh, it gets in your head a little bit, you know, when different line combinations happen. But I've always been a big believer that, you know, whatever happens, like whatever's best for a team, everything kind of works out in the end. And um, sometimes in your head, you might think one line combination works, which might, but then the other lines don't work and the team's not winning. I realize that that means nothing. You know, I'd rather have the team win and me play on whatever line I'm playing with. And if the team's winning and I'm enjoying, you know, we're all having fun, then, you know, everything's a lot better like that. We'll go next to Jeff Hamilton from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Paul, when, when special teams are going, what can that do for a team? Not just, I mean, obviously on the, on the score sheet, but just even mentally. And can it, can it, I don't want to use the word gloss over maybe other issues, but what can, what can it, what can it do for a team when, when both special teams are rolling? Yeah, you just, you feel the momentum, you feel the energy on the bench. And you know what, it's not even if, uh, not even if you're scoring, but if you're getting chances on power play, I think, those guys on the power play, the guys on the bench feel the energy, and all of a sudden, you know, you pick up five or six shots and you just kind of build off that momentum. And then, you know, obviously it's harder for you guys to notice because there's no fans in the game, but like the penalty kill, like anytime there's a big kill, like, you know, just there's a lot more energy on our bench. And obviously the guys aren't killing are, you know, the biggest fans of our PKers and vice versa with the PKers and, and the power play guys. So uh, it, it seems like at least in our games in the last five or six games, there hasn't been a crazy amount of penalties you know, for or against. And I don't know if it's just, you know, early in the season, I think uh, the refs, uh, you know, I think the refs kind of figure out how they're going to call it. And early in the season, there was probably more power plays and penalty kills each way. And now there's less and less. So it just, they're that much more important, right? So if you get like two or three, one a period, you really got to bear down, uh, knowing that, you know, more likely or not, it's a difference maker in the game where it might change the momentum of the game. And final question to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Thanks, Gregor. Hey, Paul, you, you talked about, uh, you know, some of the guys wanting to fall into that run and gun style when they play uh, against Toronto. Um, that was a similar storyline against Edmonton. And I, I think three of the four games you played against Edmonton kind of fell into that. Why is it so hard with a team that has as much skill as you guys have? Why is it so hard uh, to avoid falling into that run and gun style? Yeah, because we have a lot of young guys that are stubborn and just want to play that game. <laughs> um, yeah, because you're watching on the bench, right? So you see, you think, you think when you're playing that running gun style, like you're playing a faster game, but you realize you don't. You're just, you know, you're creating more turnovers, more havoc, and or sorry, you're creating. They're creating more turnovers and havoc than you think. And when you've been in the league longer, when you take a step back, you realize um, if you do come out as a unit of five, if you do kind of play your game, you have much more possession. And then what happens when you get possession, that's when the other team starts kind of taking chances. And, and that's when you create your turnovers and you kind of get the odd man, odd man rushes. And, and sometimes it doesn't happen right away, but like over the course of the game, that's when it happens. And, you know, as you stick that game plan, you realize, you realize it works out like that. But um, sometimes it's easier said than done. And like you said, sometimes when you're watching, when you're watching guys and you're or watching other games, it just seems like these guys are odd man rushes all the time. Maybe you don't see earlier in the game, like they play the right way and eventually the other teams start taking chances and that's what created all those chances.